that's yeah, that's what you live for. <clears throat> and every time I tell the story, I fucking cry. <laughs> Welcome to this week's Mentor Moment with me, Gary Fox. World-class entrepreneurs have world-class mentors. And every single week, I give you a new mentor. This week, it's a little bit different. This is with my actual mentor and great friend, James McCormick. James came into my life about 10 years ago and has reshaped and redefined how I think about business and how I think about life. He's had that big an impact on me. And this week, you get to hear from him. It's all about making dramatic change, how you do it and where it can lead to. Here is your mentor, James. Which, you know, both of us are, are on. And then, you know, so when I met you in 2019, I was like, I was like euphoric, like a- You were so focused. Yeah. You were immensely focused. And I think that's what drew me to you was your kind of your focus and your drive and your energy towards what you were doing. You were on a mission and you were just going for it. And I think that's one of the first times I've met someone going, he speaks my language. And he speaks the language I want to speak. I think I saw in you the things that I wanted to do and the things that I was trying to do. And like, it's hard to do it on your own, especially as an entrepreneur. It's hard to run businesses on your own, but it's also hard to then fundamentally change your life, which you were doing. Like, what was the, people talk about this all the time. Oh, I'm going to change. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But you're one of the few people that I know that's actually done it and stuck with it. What's... What was the, the the catalyst for that? Like you talked about 2017, 2018 there. What was the catalyst? Because loads of people are like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this. And I, it just sickens me because like, I'm like, don't tell me what you're going to do. Show me what you're doing. I, I think the big part of it was the self-awareness piece, kind of something I noticed. I saw myself in a mirror and I, and I, I didn't like what I saw. But I remember very, very vividly the moment that happened. I was, it was, it was 2017 in, um, hot in Spain with my family, uh, my, my young, my two young kids. So I had a, Sally was only two at that stage and Charlie was about three and we were doing a family selfie and I took it and I looked at the selfie later and I was like, who is that guy in the picture? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, that's not me. It's just this obese guy. Um, and having the two kids on your shoulder, like, and it's like, that's, yeah, that's what you live for. <clears throat> and every time I tell the story, I fucking cry. <laughs> because it means so much to me. And it meant so much to me at the moment. And that, well, they mean so much to me that I was letting them down. <laughs> hmm. I was letting them down and that's the base standard I couldn't let them down so so what did you do next I made a promise to myself that I'd be um, their old model of the, the standard that I that I felt that a dad should be um, and that was way higher than I was at the moment, you know, but I was, I was 125 kilos, which if that means to anybody, um, it's, it's very heavy. <laughs> um, I was drinking nearly every day, um, mostly not aggressive drink, but mostly just to forget about the anxiety that I had about, you know, failure probably in mm. business and letting everyone down and, um, and I just made a promise to myself that I would uh, be a be a better dad to them. Obviously, that has a, a knock on effect to being a better husband to Linda, um, being a better leader in business, um, and then being a valuable friend to people. Do you know, um, all of those kind of things are important to me. Mm. Uh, so I made a promise, and then. The first thing I did was was typically extreme um, of what I <laughs> tend to follow after that process was you go from one extreme of, you know, drinking heavily and terrible diet and being emotionally reactive to every single thing that happened to you uh, in the day, being angry, blaming everybody for everything. 
um, not being aware of your of the waves that you create in the world, only being aware of how everyone is affecting you and how ba and how terrible everyone else is, and you know how that person you know did this, and you know, um, and you know the first thing I did was I came home and I, w I got up at five a.m. in the morning and I went for a five k run, which was extremely difficult for me because I was quite overweight. But in in the process of getting up out of bed, I woke up the whole house and. <laughs> I uh, annoyed Linda, you could say, uh, to no end, and she barred me for get, from getting up at five a.m. to go for runs. But that was the start of it. I started running. Um, I started going to the gym. I was I was scared to go to the gym. Um, really embarrassed to go to the gym. I think if anyone looking at you now, if you're not if you're listening on an audio, um, you can flick over to YouTube and you can see James and all his beautiful glory. You do not. You look like a fit, athletic, strong person. You look like the kind of archetype of, you know, the kind of a, the strong, athletic person a lot of people try to be like. So for you, I think to say that is quite revealing. I think it'll be interesting to a lot of people listening and watching that. How did he feel like that? If you look at him now, and like I think a lot of people strong, feel like that. Uh, but, you know, six years ago, I wasn't. Um, and I was embarrassed because I didn't know how to use the machines in the gym. I didn't know how to lift. And aside from being weak, I just didn't know how to do anything. Um, so my, and Linda, who's uh, my wife, is very fit. She was going to the gym already before me. So it was, it was her who pushed me to, to go in. Um, and I, we hired a personal trainer. We actually did joint personal training. Okay. Um, we did it as a couple for, I don't know how long, actually, maybe six months. Um, and then I started doing personal training by myself with uh, a trainer called Anthony in Raw, um, who is really good and he really kind of helped me kind of give the confidence to say, okay, this is how you do a deadlift, this is how you do X, this is how you do Y. Um, and now I'm able to go in and and work out by myself and have done for the last number of years. Um, I think that's important though to highlight because I think a lot of people stop at the bit you talked about there whereby I'm just embarrassed I'm you know I'm, I, d I don't know what I'm doing oh I just won't do it I think it's interesting to kind of break it down because it can seem really insurmountable when you have these new challenges and you're like I don't even know where to start I've talked about this with you repeatedly the blank page problem where you're just like looking at going I don't even know what the first step is never mind take it so I think that external accountability piece of like you hired someone to help you and then you're accountable to them you're accountable to Linda and then you get the knowledge and therefore like the difficulty comes down. Yeah, and I was motivated straight away because I saw immediate results. You know, when you're that overweight as well and you're that unfit and you start having even a small bit of, you know, consistency, you see dramatic changes. Um, and I put a picture up on my Instagram, I don't know, 2018 maybe, and I was holding a 25 kilo um, plate and that was sh showcasing the amount of weight that I'd lost. Wow. In, a particular might have been a year period or something um, and I was getting in good shape and that just aesthetically gives you a huge amount of confidence but you can feel like you can go out into the world and mm. you can you know be, be challenged uh, be, and you can you know challenge for whatever you want to achieve if, uh, if the inner and the outer are linked I, I think it's not like you have to look great to, to feel great but definitely for me I know when I'm disciplined and I'm on my diet and I'm on training I feel better and my internal then is calmer because it's just one less thing to be concerned about, to be anxious about. You're like, I think why it I struggle with that is that my inner promise is broken to myself. Uh, I find it interesting you said you made a promise. I find that really, really interesting because you don't want to break promises. No. I, I think a lot of people make resolutions and they make goals and they make this. So I'm fascinated to break down with you that whole process of like reshaping your entire the, the life. The promise was to my kids, you know, ultimately, like that's, so that's the, the real driver, do you know, um, you know, like being the physical embodiment of the person I want to become is important. Like I want to look like I am in my head. I want to look like how I, how I think mentally, um, <clears throat> because I want my kids to. If you enjoyed that chat with James, I guarantee you, you'll love the whole thing. So go back to episode 302 or click the link in the description below.